Well, that was a great chance class. Ooh. Not quite sure why we learnt Incendio for like the fourth time, but uh, whatever. What did you think, Ron? Bloody hell. It's getting a bit late, don't you think, Harry? Oh, I wouldn't say that, Ron. I mean, I know the lessons are all over for the day, but the sun's still up and we've got so much of the castle to explore, like... Harry, don't you think it's time for bed? We've done all there is to do today. Oh, oh Hermione, please. You with your magic stopwatch, you should know there's plenty of time in the day to do whatever. I'm bloody exhausted, Harry. Time for bed. What? Why are you so tired? It's so early still. Harry, let's end the day. Um, y you two are creeping me out, actually. I'm just gonna go and have a look around the castle for a bit. I think we should end the day. I think we should end the day. Harry, it's time to end the day. Harry, let's end the day. <coughs> let's end the day, Harry. Harry, it's time to end the day. Harry, it's time to end the let's day. Let's end the day. <coughs> so, we've reached back to Prisoner of Azkaban on the PlayStation 2. A game I'm pretty sure we never had when I was younger. Unlike Goblet of Fire, which I was so sure we never had, and then my brother said we did have it, and I'm just an idiot. I'm gonna warn you now, there's gonna be a lot of comparison between this game, Prisoner of Azkaban on the PC, and the Chamber of Secrets on PS2. Is this game better than those two? Well... Just wanted to let you know that those who sign up to the wizard card tier on my Patreon will receive an exclusive golden wizard card of yours truly after three months as a massive thank you. Wow, I really do suit being a wizard card, don't I? But enough self-promo. Strap in because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was developed and published by EA Games, and just from the opening cutscene, oh wow, does this animation already look miles better than the PC version? The character models are the same, but like, look at that expressiveness in their faces, instead of just... Much like the PC game though, we start with a tutorial on the train, where chasing after an escaped scabbers, Harry takes on a film realistic monster book of monsters, a massive heavy trunk, and a creepy looking Malfoy and his cronies. Why does Malfoy look so strange in these games? Dueling opponents is uh, it's okay. Flipendo looks different. Excuse me, what is that Flipendo symbol? There should be some continuity in the cinematic Harry Potter gaming universe. Locking onto enemies is fine, but I could not for the life of me find a way of switching targets. <gasps> I've got to turn into a pumpkin. Dementors attack the train. He needs more than a hug. Thank God, someone competent for once. And we have a not really that tense dragging of Harry back away from creatures that are blatantly just a ripoff of the Dark Riders from Lord of the Rings. Get some original ideas, Joanne. Back at Hoggy Hoggy Hogwarts. Harry stares mopingly out of the window when Ron forces Harry to show him his large volume. Show you your phone every time. That sounds like a euphemism. Don't worry though, the tutorial doesn't end on the train. They're the foulest creatures that walk the earth. Except they don't walk. They float. And we are forced to relearn Expelliarmus yet again. Don't you think this would have come in handy uh, before we had to fight the Slytherins on the train? To be fair though, it does actually work quite well. Although I will admit I barely ended up equipping it and using it for basically the whole of the game due to a reason that will become apparent later. Ron drags us off to see his brothers in their shop in the disused bathroom. And honestly, I love that this is a staple in the PS2 games. Like I did barely come up here in this game, only really when I could be bothered to upgrade my spell casting and to get a few potions and consumables here and there, but it is really nice to see some continuity and familiarity. This also extends to the rest of the game, where the castle interior and exterior are very very similar to the previous game's design, with a few tweaks here and there, such as the inclusion of the clock tower courtyard, the wooden bridge and the big stones, where Hermione <laughs> slaps the life out of Malfoy. <laughs> Cruciatus curse ought to loosen your tongue. Back in the shop, we finally learn the main gimmick of this game, the ability to switch characters. They also each learn their own spells and have unique special abilities. These abilities are a bit contrived though and have almost no relation to the character, like Ron's is being able to spot secret passages and search bookcases, despite probably being the least observant of the three. The old Weasley touch does it again. Is this a thing now? Hermione's is being a skinny legend and crawling through small gaps, and Harry's is being able to jump, climb ropes, and reading the Marauder's map, where said map, for some reason, is located atop an obelisk. Obelisk? 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 Obelisk! In an ancient Egyptian theme level, for some reason? This whole section is yet another tutorial, teaching us almost everything else we will have to do in the game. Harry's platforming abilities definitely get a good test here. You've missed the switch! 
I've missed a switch. I died. We unleash Cornish Pixies that take Ron away for good and the other two grief for his life. End of the game. Thanks for watching. Further on, we come across this stunning light beam mirror themed puzzle, a feature this game absolutely loves. And sure, the puzzles are never usually that difficult, but moving into a gorgeous room, we control Hedwig in a cute little section to collect the map. And returning to the shop, I actually bought some things. Wick and Weld potions are always useful for when you inevitably can't duel to save your life in any of these damn Harry Potter games. Maybe I'm just bad. And the dung bombs can be used by Ron for flipping over these weird trophy torch things. Maybe something fun happens when you get them all? I don't know because I wasn't able to find them all, obviously. Hermione also has this cool collectathon style challenge where finding all the statues of famous witches and wizards throughout the game increases the power of your spells. Wizard cards can also be found throughout the castle, although to say the characters were more than enthused about collecting them would be stretching the truth. Good! But anyway, having cleared out the shop completely, it was time to end the day. The next morning, Hermione wakes up after a 10 hour bender in the pub, still in her school uniform and makeup from last night, and rushes down to the common room to blast the other two with flippendo for not waking her up in time for defense against the dark arts class. Take this, boy you lived. Not that you'd ever know because they are, they literally never mention it. Let's go to the third floor. We really should be going. Let's go to defense against the dark arts. We're wasting too much time. That's interesting coming from you. Heading into class, Lupin tells us three to head into the challenge and collect the spell book, another feature taken from HP2 PS2. Honestly though, is it too much to ask to learn the spell first? Like could the teachers just do their job for once, please? In we go to the Glacius challenge, and the music as we walk in is sparkly and cool. But soon enough, it's replaced by something more stressful as we take on a pack of imps. And I have to say, the target locking is kind of really annoying and frustrating with this many creatures. Much better when there's only a few. We actually do some teamwork for once instead of one person just leading the action as usual. Look at the three of them work together to move a giant cauldron. If only Hermione could contribute this much throughout the game instead of repeatedly attacking Ron the whole time. Excuse me. I didn't mean it. You're literally a liar. Hermione Granger. A stunningly icy puzzle room awaits, with some rotating of mirrors and flippendoing of these mechanised things to progress before we enter this lovely old library. Love that this just feels like part of the castle just got too cold and had to be abandoned. This winter's energy crisis anyone? This room has us placing each of the characters and boxes on these floor panels by switching between them. A nice puzzly bit and it was at this stage I realised just how annoying the other two were going to be the whole game. Do those things in the floor do anything? No, they do absolutely nothing. There's some kind of switch over there. Will that do anything? It literally won't do anything. Look, there's a switch over there! Yeah, I know. Ron slips behind a secret revolving door to stumble upon Pixies again. Not more. They're not even supposed to be in this film. Next up, it's Hermione's time to shine, as she takes on a lovely slidey puzzle in a somehow even more icy section. And these box slide puzzles are probably the most complex part of the game, and sometimes can actually be pretty challenging, I will admit, even for me. And like, just saying, I'm doing a PhD. Just saying. I'm just an idiot. Soon enough, though, she finds the Glacier Spellbook in this gorgeous circular room. She learns the spell, destroying the book in the process to avoid the other two advancing their magical education. Ugh. And apparently, in a transition during the loading screen, we suddenly just find ourselves descended deep into hell itself. Okay. This feels dangerous. Also, just saying, PS2 era fire and lava is mwah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. That lighting. Glacius is actually pretty nice, as you have to aim where you're spreading the icy plumes, involving an actual amount of involvement. One thing this game definitely has over the PC version for sure. However, one thing that this game does annoy me with is that now that we can switch characters with circle and we can interact with items with X, we are left with only two buttons to equip spells, potions, and other consumable items. EA really said <laughs> the other 10 buttons on the controller, eh? At this point in the game, it's just about okay, but look how many spells Hermione learns by the end. Constantly having to switch back is not a fun time game. Hermione meets up with the other two and literally leads them into a a Dark Souls meets the Incredibles big sphere robot boss battle, like thanks a lot love. This was probably one of the most intense boss battles I've played in ages, but at least there are basically no consequences for dying. I actually love the design of this boss, it looks so good. These boots are made for walking. Luckily it's susceptible to our newly learned Glacius spell and it explodes in a cacophony of iron and flame.
Lupin doesn't even seem to acknowledge the trauma that the trio had to just go through, and even tells Harry to f*** <laughs> off when he asks him about the Dementors afterwards. Hermione buggers off, and so the boys head down for potions class, where Snape is just as iconic as ever. If you pay attention, you might actually learn something. <laughs> Hermione shows up out of nowhere, and Ron, full of teenage angst, 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 smashes a vial and poisons Harry with the toxic gas. Thank God Snape is teaching us about the Wigan World Potion. What are the chances? He sends us off with a list of ingredients that even Nigella Lawson doesn't have in her, um, collection. Ron and Hermione give us the choice of collecting the ingredients or heading to bed, but my God, do they not understand the meaning of free will. Whenever you can end the day, the other two you're with will not shut up about how tired they are, how much they want to go to bed, how much you should end the day. How about fuck <laughs> off? I think it's time to turn in. I can't think of anything else to do. I'm not sure that there's much to do right now. I'm getting tired. I don't know what to do. I think it's time to turn in. I think it's time to turn in. Ignoring their constant pleas, I decided to head outside. And my god, this place is beautiful. It's very similar to the grounds, as in the second game on PS2, but the landscape seems to be vastly improved. A lot less blocky and obvious for sure. And the lighting and weather change throughout the game, from a calming, damp autumn afternoon. Oh my god! Rain! Delicious! To a snowy picturesque landscape, to a sun-bleached summer's day. Honestly, this is the perfect holiday destination. I will say that the exterior of the castle here is just as good looking as it was before, although without all of the fun hidden challenges and collectibles throughout, there is owl racing though. Press circle to fly in time with the wings. Well, we missed that one. We've already failed. Hilarious. Oh, are we speeding up? Oh my god, have we got it? Because it's certainly not in time with the wings, but never mind, we're getting overtaken. It's kind of not working and is working. Oh, we've lost it. Like, the speed, I'm sorry, it's made up. It's literally made up. Bye. However, the graphics in this game are pretty great, and a lot of it still holds up to this day. The inside of Hogwarts is stunning as ever, like the grand staircase is drop dead gorgeous like let me live here now thank you. The particle effects are also really cool at times, like the spells can be super mesmerising, and fire throughout the game also looks pretty good. The animation of the characters is also pretty damn good, and they can be very expressive at times, uh, even if sometimes it does feel a bit out of place. She's so smug. The voice acting is also great, even if it does get a bit grating at times. Beaky's gonna be executed at sunset. I couldn't help him. Take some lessons, Daniel Radcliffe. And this game had some genuinely funny moments. Like, it was as much a shock to me as I'm sure it is to you, trust me. The music was, as per usual for the Harry Potter games, spellbinding. And there were a few pieces I hadn't heard before that were so beautiful. The next day, Neville has apparently found himself trapped in a classroom. No offence, but why do we have to keep helping Neville in every bloody version of these games? Harry and Ron enter Muggle Studies. And, uh, you know how I said I didn't think I had this game? Well, I was instantly whipped back by 20 years as the memories hit me that, yes, we actually did have this game after all. I just re I feel like I recognize this. I feel like I remember him, but now I don't know. Oh, although this is giving me, this is unlocking some memories here. I swear we had this game. An evil looking golem has Neville trapped, but honestly, the way it's plodding about the place, minding its own business, I just felt really sorry for it. Ron gets propelled up by a jack in the box and randomly learns Lumos before accidentally releasing these horrid ghost things with lanterns. These buggers were probably one of, if not the, the most annoying parts of this damn game. You have to Lumos them for enough time for them to become solid and then kill them off with Flipendo, but good luck when its other friends are there to pepper you with hot coals the whole time. Ten years later, Ron finally escapes, only to be bombarded with vicious deadly muggle toys like rubber ducks and the evil robot from the Toy Story 2 game. Honestly, maybe Slytherins have a point. Like, I'm not saying it's right to bully mudbloods, but in this case, in the Harry Potter gaming universe, absolutely it is. Coaxing the gremlin back to its home, we return to the common room, where the fat lady is mysteriously gone. Uh, never mind the fact that we were out of bed in the middle of the night and deserve to be punished, but whatever. Naturally, we ignore that plot point and move on to Hagrid's class, where Harry, and only Harry, learns how to ride Buckbeak. Although it turns out Hermione also can randomly ride Buckbeak too, no, don't ask. Go on. 
climb onto his back. What was that angle? Flying was kind of difficult, nowhere near as intuitive as the Flappy Bird-esque controls of the PC version. Buckbeak takes it out on Malfoy, who f***ing <laughs> deserves getting bitch slapped just saying. Moving on with the plot, Harry plays Quidditch and gets almost immediately overwhelmed with Dementors and taken to the hospital wing, where a weird acting Ron wakes us and tells us he knows where Sirius Black is. Literally didn't ask, but Harry follows Ron, only to push Harry into a pit. Don't push me. You absolute asshole. And plot twist, turns out it was Malfoy the whole time using the Polyjuice Potion. <laughs> what? But sis, the drama does not stop there. Oh! Where the real Ron shows up to knock Malfoy out. Probably the most iconic part of this whole game. Wow, oh my god, that was amazing. Anyway, escaping, we come across these horrid red caps, these gross enemies that throw stink bombs as well as attack. I won't lie, most of the enemies in this game I found to just be annoying rather than challenging. Most of them you just spam attack and like any other features the enemies have, just exist to delay their death. Harry summons Hedwig to fetch Hermione for the two gents to let Miss Skinny Legend United Kingdom 2022 through a small gap where the only route to escape is through this weird, gloomy Crash Bandicoot 2, Fellowship of the Ring PS2, Shrek 2 PS2 prison looking section, where we finally get to play with some of our newly acquired spells. Nice that we actually get to use them, I guess. Lara Croft, sorry, sorry, I mean Hermione Granger, narrowly escapes death and couldn't look any less pleased with herself. Alright, bitch, she learns yet another spell, the bloody know it all. Why does Hermione get to learn the spells? Just because she's smarter than the rest? Oh wait, that is the reason. Reparo, the repairing spell. Look at that. That power. The power that Hermione has. RPG Queen. The trio eventually escape the dungeons, and for once, probably actually deserve to go to bed, seeing as it's like 4am. Sorry, what's that? End the day. You know what? We're not gonna end the day. Not just yet. The next day, apparently we still haven't got all the ingredients. It's okay, because we get to fly Buckbeak in the beautiful snowy landscape. And collecting the ingredients was actually kind of fun. Snape then teaches us how to make an antidote, which should be foreshadowing for the next challenge. We head to charms class, which I must say, look at this gorgeous lighting, to learn Carpe Retractum. Walking into the challenge, I already want to die. This is, it, this is giving me similar feeling to the incendio challenge, so I can tell we're going to be here for three hours. And indeed, this level did actually take just under one hour. One hour for a spell challenge. It's almost like everything in this level was placed here just to annoy me. We start off with these annoying floating torches, followed by the three characters plunging to their doom, only to be ambushed by more of those annoying red caps. Hermione lets the men do the heavy lifting though, while she slinks on under a narrow gap in the gate to enter a ginormous, swampy, rusty circle prison, where apparently we can freeze the toxic goop, although good luck not falling in. If you thought ending the day was annoying, just wait till you get bitten to death by poisonous pixies. I've been poisoned! I need some antidote! I really need some antidote now! Oh, she's going to die! This poison's really affecting me! I need some antidote! Just die. Just die. This is such an overly aggressive mechanic, where a single bite can poison you and drains your stamina pretty quickly. Sure, you can cure yourself with the antidote, but the second you get bitten again, it's all over, meaning it's kind of useless until you actually manage to kill them all off, which is really bloody difficult because they keep whizzing all about the place. The next room was quite the puzzle, in a good way. After clearing out yet more doxies and sorting out the light beam, you have to slide a block of ice around, and using a Reparo on the broken wooden boxes to slide it to the right place, this puzzle actually took me a while, because uh, I'm thick as <laughs> Eventually meeting up with the other pair of jokers, Harry shows off his Olympic gymnastic skills. Jericho Street Genius for under seven's gymnastics team. I've got the bronze. Harry finally learns a spell in this damn game, Carpe Retractum, which he can use to rip the shields off red caps and pull out bridges. And we finally get to the boss, another Dark Souls looking monstrosity, and honestly, I will say, as really annoying as all the normal enemies are in this game, the designs of the bosses are spectacular. A big step up from the rubbishy weed tennis gargoyles from the second game. This challenge's big Karen boss takes the form of a giant spinning knight chess piece encased in thick steel shields, ripping them off with the Carpe Retractum spell. Each shield becomes its own scuttling little enemy. What a honestly fantastic idea. Oh, absolutely <laughs> this. Having stripped the main boss of its dignity, 
see? It draws in the swords lining the walls to become a terrifying pointy Beyblade of Death that shoots bombs. However, one quick pull of its helmet and it is defeated. Leaving the level, I'm suddenly hit with the thought, uh, where is the plot? Why does nothing seem to be happening? Never fear, Harry finally decides to learn to defend himself from the Dementors, and yes that's right, they are called Dementors, not Dementors as they keep saying in the films and whatever, yes this is a hill I will die on. Turns out Lupin has set up a proper challenge level for Expecto Patronum. Uh, PC game Lupin, maybe think about putting some effort in for once? Harry faces a series of islands connected by Carpe Retractum frogs, absolutely loving this weird blend of medieval and Victorian imagery this game is giving, and Lupin sets a boggart loose on Harry. And uh, I'm not being funny right, but like, why is this boggart a billion times harder than the Dementors on the train? No, I don't want to hear a sensible answer like that was the tutorial level. This section was actually quite the challenge, where Harry has to unlock the door at the end by pushing four blocks in each corner, all the while avoiding the life-sucking boggart Dementor, and facing the frogs that seem to randomly appear and hide. Eventually, we make it through and learn the damn Expecto Hoo-Ha spell, and I will admit this spell is really Really cool. Harry sends out a Patronus from his wand that we can control. Love that there's interactivity in this game with the spells, love it. It can be a bit difficult to control in tight spaces or with obstacles, but overall it's a sweet little inclusion. However, Harry can't resist the kiss from the Boggart, and is simply overcome with emotion. Waking up, the trio decide to head to Hogsmeade to collect some fairy wings for the next potions class. Shame Harry's a loser with no parental consent form, boo hoo! And so they decide that heading through the secret passage by the humpback statue is the way to go. First of all though, escaping Lupin's office. Not sure why that requires Hermione learning a new spell to literally leave the classroom, but guess that's what we're going with. Draconophores is definitely a lot more lame in this game than the PC version. <gasps> oh, that's kind of... Mm, yeah, that's not exciting. Where it simply allows dragon statues to shoot fire and burn away precious medieval tapestries. Sneaking past prefects and through secret passages, we finally make it to the damn statue and to hold Mead. Although, really, it's just the Shrieking Shack exterior. None of the fun of the actual village, unfortunately. The sniffly Slytherins make an appearance, but for some reason it was super easy to defeat this time. Also, collecting the fairy wings was an obscure series of steps. By burning the bush with the dragon statue, freezing the fairies, and then getting their wings. I, I don't know why this was as difficult as a 90s point and click adventure for me, but like, I'm, I'm just stupid, let's be real. Never fear, though. Real life Dementals come to steal the show, and Harry soul at the same time. After a bit of a tiffle, the trio decide the best course of action is to simply snowboard away from life's problems, and soon enough they're back in Hogwarts. Heading back to bed, Peeves is kind enough to share a Daily Mail exclusive reveal that trolls have literally been placed in the corridors for our protection. Thank god they are distracted by stink pellets. Smell that ugly? Although Lord knows the range or time of distraction, I kinda just winged it and hope for the best. Making it back, we get a fun montage of them trying to find Sirius Black under their beds, and we hear that Scabbers and Crookshanks have gone missing. Uh, not being rude, but have you, uh, tried using the map to find anyone? It's very weird that the night nice Scabbers goes missing, that cat of yours decides to slip out too. Some people have got better things to do than hang around here with you. Snape gives us our final potions class of the year, which is just a potion that increases our endurance or whatever, I don't know. Uh, not relevant as death is meaningless in the Harry Potter gaming PS2 cinematic universe. Also, I do wish that there was some kind of like fun, challengey, puzzly bit for potions classes, but whatever. Hagrid, giving an Oscar-worthy performance, announces that Buckbeak is going to be put to death. Honestly, deserves it if the bird's gonna discriminate against giving ugly people rides. The game now decides to race through like nine tenths of the plot in about 30 minutes flat. The whiplash this game is giving is too much for me. Meeting Hagrid, we hide from the executioner when Scabbers races off towards the Whomping Willow with Ron in tow before a black dog drags him away into the dark. Harry and Herm take chase, and after taking on some redcaps, doxies, and salamanders, we have a quick rush through the scene at the Shrieking Shack, and Lupin turning into the werewolf before we are dumped right in front of a massive group of Dementors. Oh wow, yeah, this is happening, isn't it? And we have to drag Sirius away. Although, apparently, we can lose this section, despite Harry's dad being there to save us. You remember that? That happens, right? Harry, Harry's dad saves us? Yeah, sounds right. Sounds realistic. He's not dead. Not dead at all. Having dealt with them, you'd think we'd get a bit of a break, but uh, no. We're back in no time again, scaring them off once more with an uber-charged, super-powered Patronus in a final boss battle that was actually kind of tricky, I will admit. We have to masterfully steer the stab through the mass of Dementors to obliterate 
the one specifically attacking Sirius, took a good number of tries for sure, and while it was nowhere near as good as the other boss battles in the game, it was a tense final challenge, and to be honest, did suit the reality of the situation. Unlike the PC version. <laughs> and that's your lot. The only thing left to do is gently glide around a moonlit Hogwarts with this gorgeous music. And do more owl racing if you want. Overall, I liked this game. Although it was equal parts great and annoying, I did find that the longer this game went on for, I did like it less and less for some reason. Was it better than the PC version? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think it was pretty on par with a balance of both good and bad, where the PC version had fun challenges, but was really short and a lack of effort put in. This game had some amazing visuals, boss fights and puzzles, but some fantastically fucking <laughs> awful repetitive voice lines and frustrating enemies and really long levels. I think the ability to switch between the three characters, while good in theory, was overall underused, or at least there weren't many puzzles that required all three working together at the same time, and more just like, oh it's Hermione's turn to slink on under a raised barrier now. I think I maybe slightly prefer the Chamber of Secrets PS2 game to this PS2 game, but honestly they are both pretty similar and both good. But now we've reached the end of the video, I think you will know what time it is. It's time to end the day. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. I honestly never thought I would finish making it, so I'm impressed if anyone managed to finish watching it. What a... What a, what a strange game. I have such conflicting thoughts. Let me know below what you thought of this game. I know that some of you out there absolutely love it, so... Read me to filth, go on. If you haven't checked out my other Harry Potter videos, then feel free to do so. And feel free to catch me on stream at some point too. I stream on YouTube and Twitch. Once again, please feel free to support me on Patreon if you want to help support the channel. There's also a Discord server if you want to talk to like-minded people. And yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Oh, Ron, are you okay? Ron, you're vibrating a bit, love. You okay? Okay.